Yeah. I, I imagine he had to get knighted with like a, a, a KFC drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't confirm good. David is not a fucking idiot. Thank you. Thank you. I have the lyrics brought up. I know it's going to make me look like the freaking cast with a ghost, but uh. <laughs> You're disrespecting me in a public forum right now. You realize that? Yeah. Okay. It's top nine, and it's not nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, or two. <laughs> No, 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 no. If we got brought to court for for someone trying to sue us because they broke a console with a chicken wing, that would be the best publicity for it's, us ever. No, it's like... <laughs> and without yeah. further ado, we bring to you the Honorable Sturgill Simpson. <laughs> Hello and welcome everybody to episode 44 of the Unboxing Life Podcast. I'm here, joined with my brothers. Brothers. <laughs> my brothers in arms. My boys. Uh, in those kind of arms, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're starting we're with, along together. Yeah, we're, 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 uh, we're going to give you a little uh, country review this week. But, you know, before we do that, I'm going to introduce my boys, Alex. What's absolutely happening, everybody? I'm, I'm all about America. So, there you go. <laughs> As you can tell, uh, Trevor, what's up, guys? I'm wearing a shirt from a show that I've never seen in my goddamn life. <laughs> and last but not least, Cameron. That is me. I am Cameron. Uh, what is going on, beautiful people? I'm happy to be here. I. Uh... This is going to be an interesting one, uh, especially for me. So uh, I'm getting my hands ready to wring your neck. So it's fun. <laughs> strap, strap in. It's going to be. It's going to be a good one. So uh, before David. we get to all that, David, what are oh, we yeah. reviewing yeah, this week? Eddie. Well, we are reviewing a Sailor's Guide to Earth by Sturgill Simpson, 2016 release. I think believe won a Grammy for Best Country Album that it year. Did. It did. Do yeah. That. So Dang. we're going to hop into it. We got some new country fans, or you know, maybe, oh, well, possibly, Hopefully. I don't know. Maybe some new country haters uh country apologists me. yeah <laughs> country apologists hopefully i don't we know but... find out i don't know certainly gonna find out let's jump into traditions real quick um i'll go with i like the joke to start things off so i'll mm. go with that like, oh okay okay yeah, i'm glad i'm glad because this joke <laughs> is kind of kind of fits within the theme but this is an authentic joke this joke my own father told me this joke just the other day. So you know. <laughs> okay. Passing it down? Yeah. Passing it down, exactly right. So, merry it's men. It. What is the difference between beer nuts and deer nuts? <laughs> beer nuts and I, I always, nuts. I always laughed at the, the idea of beer nuts, but... <laughs> That's the... Uh, I feel like I've heard this before, yeah. I think I've definitely heard it before, but I don't remember the punch. Go ahead. At all. Go ahead. All right. mm. You can you can find beer nuts in the store for a dollar fifty, but you can find deer nuts under a buck. Nice. <laughs> under a buck. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Hell yeah, brother! Wow, I thought it, I that thought was, it was good. Be, yeah. No, that was that was big solid. <laughs> that was true. Solid. That's a true. I know. I, shout out to Alex's dad, man. That was good. Shout uh, out. That was good. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Mm, who's going to go next? Dang. Uh, Trevor, okay. you want to go? I can do <laughs> that. <laughs> right. So as we Dang. as we discussed with our last review of uh, Ari's album, I'm going to take a favorite moment from the album mm. uh, in, in terms of lyrics. And like, like a, a, yep. so this this last bit, it's actually the last bit of the album. And it's off of Call to Arms. And the outro goes, turn off the TV, turn off the news. There's nothing to see here. They're serving the blues. Bullshit on my TV. Bullshit on my radio. Hollywood telling me how to be me. Bullshit, got to <laughs> That was good. All right. Nice, dude. That was quite good. I like that. Uh, bro, mm. I get chills every time I hear that fucking out or that song. Yeah. Uh, that great. is. That's definitely a track that's on this album. Uh, I'll say that. That is very true. Yeah, that is a track. Great set of bars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. bars. Okay. You or me, David. You or me. 
Um, I guess I'll go with me because maybe yours will be more directly related, or maybe not, and that's it, fine. It, it, it's it not. is. So. <laughs> okay, okay. I was gonna go with a song called "The Whistler" by an artist who goes by White Buffalo. I figured I'd take this opportunity to, you know, if someone you know is into this album, they can check out some more country. This is a fantastic song. Uh, I don't think it's giving away too much because he kind of says it out front. It's a song about PTSD coming back from the war. Yeah, it's very harrowing, very harrowing, very uh, elegantly written and haunting, but absolutely great song. Uh, Is it in the vein of this kind of genre? Like, because Sergil is obviously country, but it's more in the alternative space. Yeah. Um, It's less alternative, but he's got some, like, you know, electric guitars coming in there, which can definitely be country, but it's more uh, almost like folksy country, I guess, in a certain way, but Okay. It's a little different, but I think you might like it if you like this album. Yeah. I can fuck with that. What is it yeah. again? Uh, the Whistler by White Buffalo. Cool. Mm-hmm. I like that yeah. name. Yeah, me too. All right, bro. There cool. you go. All right. yeah. Cameron, give us your fun fact of the of the episode. I Last always want to say least. week. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll get out of that eventually, or we won't. We'll see. <laughs> Either way. Just, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> ask, ask us at episode 100 when we're hearing David's track of the week. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anyway, last but not least, part two. Uh, we got a fact about our boy Sturgill Simpson. Um, something you may not have known mm. is that Sturgill Simpson is a Kentucky colonel, having been honored at the Kentucky State Capitol on March 20th, 2018. The title mm. of Kentucky colonel is the highest title of honor bestowed by the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and it comes with the title of honorable, mm. meaning that he is, should officially be referred to as the Honorable Sturgill Simpson. Damn, that's fucking wow. hard as fuck. Oh my god, that's better than sir. That's better. That than is. Sir. That's yep. pretty dope. Ladies and the gentlemen, honorable. the honorable Sturgill Simpson, and then he takes the stage. Wow. That's baller as fuck. That's so cool. That's baller. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. no, no relation to Colonel Sanders though. It is the same title bestowed upon Colonel Sanders. Ah, oh, wow. Uh, wow. Kentucky. Kentucky. The honorable that Colonel was, Sanders. That was about eighty years prior to it being bestowed on a uh, on. Or, oh boy. Yeah, it was like the. Th- I was reading the whole freaking Wikipedia article about the Kentucky Colonel um, title because I was like, "This is some. This is part of American like legislature that I knew nothing about." So it was super weird. But yeah, it's literally like Colonel Sanders comes from him originally being named as a Kentucky Colonel, and then he just took uh-huh. it and ran with it. Dang! Yeah. So we did. Wow, that's hey, dope. Looking. <laughs> I never knew. It's it's colonel is one of those words in the English language that just like <laughs> when you look at it, it it just completely throws you for a loop. Like I totally yeah. understand why English is so difficult to like to yeah. learn. It's C O L O N E L, and it's like the last half of it is fine, but colonel. Look up look up the etymology and see where it comes from, because I there's no way it's just English. I meant I should have done this before, but. No, we'll we'll save it for another time. We'll save it for another time. Anyway, but yeah, if, if fun fun mm-hmm. fun activity at home, look up where the fuck kernel came from and how it's in our language. But I, th- I want to say it's yeah. French or something. Country I Dave. No Country I Dave. We have, to, we have to change my name for this episode. That's fact. There you go. Rocking the uh, the Florida Country Boy shirt. You know, you see quite a few boys looking like me rocking this type of fit around where we're from. So. That fit. That is, <laughs> yeah. that is the fit. That, that's definite. You gotta wear Crocs and some shorts. Oh, God, Crocs. The Crocs. And then you hop up into your 18 inch lifted pickup truck. Hell Cody yeah. can tell you a thing or two about how to be country. That is true. Yeah. Shout that out is to Cody. True. Shout out. And without yeah. further ado, we bring to you the Honorable Sturgill Simpson. Nice. Let's this guy to earth. So I yes. wanted to start with, and you, you basically took half of what I was going to say already with the Grammy album. So mm-hmm. he won uh, at the 2017 Grammys. He won Best Country Album, which is mm-hmm. fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But if you guys looked at the other category that he was nominated for, it was Album of the Year, which is like the coveted Grammy of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there are some fucking bangers in this. So there's 25 by Adele, which oh, wow. sold 3 million copies in its first week. <laughs> there's <laughs> Lemonade. By Beyonce, which is like <laughs> a to pimp a butterfly in female form. <laughs> There's Purpose by Justin Bieber, which is just a straight smash pop album. Wow. 
and there's views by Drake that sold a million <laughs> copies in his first week. Wow. He's, so he's, he is up against some hard hitters. Then like the biggest artist in the world is <laughs> just like up yeah, against really. all of them. What and, the yeah. I'd like to see That's the crazy. the snub list for that to see what it made it over. Like I mean right. obvious obviously that that's like a you know if they're all nominated, they're basically equal kind of a thing. But to to see what Grammys decided it was over would be interesting to see for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Boy, Adele from... won that by the way. Oh yeah. So Dang. makes sense. Well, yeah. So so from there what we're not in that doing? not in that category. She shouldn't have won. But good for him, yeah. But either way, she does make dollars. so. So I guess that's uh, I've you know I've listened to this album so many times over the years. Trevor has sort of heard it, getting more into it now. You know, yeah. uh, I had heard you, it like maybe twice max, mm-hmm. maybe one and a half times back in like when I used to work at UPS. I recommended this and, like a few years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you were like, because I, I was just like Cameron when I was like, you know, I, I'm not really a big country fan. Like I used to be the one of those kids that would be like, oh, what do you listen to music or what, what kind of music do you listen to? And then you're like, everything country. but country. But like, country. Damn. It, yeah. it was it's I, so cringe looking back on it because I didn't listen to everything. <laughs> I didn't listen to reggaeton. I didn't listen to anything Latin. I didn't listen to anything Japanese at the time. You know, there's a lot of shit. I didn't listen to, but um, yeah, so I yeah. have a complicated relationship with this one. Yeah, it is a, it's a common statement, but on that note, you know, these boys were kind of on that same, uh, in that same place, and I want to know if it changed at all or if it stayed exactly the same. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pre- <laughs> like, a, a, dude, an asterisk before we start this. this uh, there are two songs on this album that you have to like if you have ears. <laughs> I've, I've two already- songs. I've already publicly Two said that I like one of them. So okay, well then yeah. you got a fifty-fifty shot of liking the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, because um, when we get there, that's that's kind of an incorrect statement, I guess. Pause on unless this, unless Alex mm-hmm. is chomping at the bit to to go. Do you do you want to share your thoughts, Alex? First. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, to put I'm not a big here. country listener. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't listen to it. It's mm-hmm. like Trevor said. I'll say I'll tell people. I don't like country though, you know. I'll be in, I'll be with somebody's car. I'll be with them. They'll be like, "What kind of music do you like?" They put on the music. I tell them I don't do country though, because sometimes they might do country. I'm not trying to hear any of that. But uh, uh, this is pretty solid. A pretty solid project that I listened to, man. Okay. Uh, a lot of the instrumentation was on point. I mean, mm-hmm. brother, and we're gonna get into that. I can <laughs> respect that. Right I was I'm like, yeah. dang, the intro track, and then it goes into the second track, which is Breakers Roar. Brave, Breakers mm-hmm. Roar, there you go. And I'm like, the intro the intro part of that track, it's like a, like strings, it's going, I'm like, all right. Super oh, yeah. song, I, very song. I hear them, I hear them. I hear you know? But okay. I think ultimately, I don't like the, I don't like country vocals. That's what it is. I can't get past, I can't get past the hard the strong country accent in the in the in singing. I don't know why I don't like it, but I don't like it. So yeah, he's one of the I, very I few know. country vocalists that I feel like talks like this. Like he doesn't just put on a show. Like I feel like he talks like this. I would want to <laughs> hear it and an, an interview with him because it, it just sounds so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it sounds so incredibly authentic. Like it's it's not yeah. forced at all. Yeah, I can. I can. He taps yeah, can into his it. soul like with that voice. Like there's certain notes that he'll build on this album that just make me like dude what are you doing like he's he's got an insane voice yeah i agree but yeah, yeah he definitely has a strong voice and i can i can give him that but the vote like just that style is not for me okay. I I thought, to say. that's probably my biggest thing with this album i thought that might be one of the biggest hang-ups because you know i think trevor and i have even talked about like grime and stuff in the uk like mm-hmm. him not like having a hard time getting past the accent sometimes and it can be a thing with music i want to say it's something that you can it's one of those things you can, if you really want to, like you know, wear down over time and just get used to. But it's like you know, with me with metal, like yeah. Just, if you yeah. if you find if you find that you know that there's value at the end of the road, you'll put the effort into getting past it. So if you want to, yeah, yeah, if and, you want, uh, that's the that's the key thing. Yeah, I can understand that though. So I'm glad at least you say it's solid. Yeah, instrumentation, all that. Cameron, your first impressions, yeah. So. 
Jeez, Cameron's gonna hit God. you with some shit. He's gonna like it. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this, this was the uh, the lead up, wasn't it? And of course, uh, yeah, I went into this album as has been um, previously said. Uh, you know, a a country disliker, or you know, a meme hater at the very least, but not actually like ever putting any effort into hating country, just being like, that's not it for me, and whatever. Hmm. Um. That being said, I do actually kind of hate on songs like "Come Take a Ride on My Big Green Tractor." <laughs> with... It's like, it's like, yeah. what are you saying, bro? Like, I like, unless I'm vibing with your voice, which I'm not at all. Like, I don't, I could care less, completely care less about the song. Um, so I guess that was my main problem. I think with country in general was like that they're not. I've never heard a country song, or not never, but like rare, rarely do I hear a country song that's not like vapid and poppy and like just meant to be sung along to in a stadium versus like actually enjoyed his music mm. um i mean that obviously that's a way of enjoying music but the other side of that um yeah so i mean this thurgill it was like okay david album likes his album a lot i know david's not a fucking idiot david album <laughs> david album david album. i can't confirm Good. david is not a fucking idiot Thank you, thank you. That I think we can all do that. I think that's I think that's the consensus of the pod. Yeah. Um, Dang. My David has the music job. taste. He wouldn't recommend this for no reason. So I'm gonna check. I'm gonna do my best to check all my bias at the door going into this. Okay. As you should. I did it, right. and it was effortful. But good God, was it worth it? Because good. I okay. th- I talked about them not saying anything of substance as like one of my massive hangups about country, even if I like the instrumentation, or whatever Sturgill is doing it all. He's like, I mean the, the album we'll get into is like a, 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 me- a letter to his son basically in, in most part. And he talks mm-hmm. about, you know, mental health, how to, how to live your life, what to do and what not to do. Um, his perspective on like life and death, he, like he's getting into it. And a lot of like, if you just read it, it reads like poetry. It's not, it's not yeah. like anything, you know, vap- it, it like the lines are well-written and topical. And then he's funny sometimes too. And it's like, I, I actually, especially when I went and made a point to listen to the lyrics, um, enjoyed this album quite a bit. Um, so there nice. you go. Yeah, nice. I I you can actually all release your breath now. <laughs> I know I'm oh, so relieved. <laughs> I must have heard this album like ten times in the past two weeks, and the last time that I listened to it, right before we started recording, I sat in front of my computer and listened to it while watching mm. or reading the lyrics on Genius. Mm. And holy shit, like I had a completely different revelation with this album, and like total Absolutely. appreciation for everything. Like it's mm. like you said, it's like poetry. It's it's uh it's incredibly powerful and. It plays like a concept album from like, um, from you know talking to his son when he just gets born and teaching him all the ways and coming from a wise position and telling mm-hmm. him what what to do and what not to do, like you said. Um, yeah. And this album was actually recorded live, which is uh, saw that. Yeah, it's uh, not very common. I don't think, at right. least in the space that I listen to. Mm-hmm. So. Like for anyone that doesn't know what that means, it's like you basically just get everyone that's together on the song that's responsible for playing a part on that song in the same room and you just play it like you play it straight through and you take whatever take that like if you if you come across a take that you like after playing it 17 times, boom, there it is. That's that's the that's the song. So Mm -hmm. I want to stress how good the instrumentation is (laughs) and I want to read off on I'm on uh, call to arms. The track info, bro. I okay. I did this. I was go- I almost wanted to do this. I'm so glad you're doing it. Go ahead. <laughs> there's a fugal horn. There's a trumpet. There's a trombone. There's a tenor saxophone. There's a steel guitar, piano, organ, horns, electric guitar, drums, bass, bagpipes, baritone saxophone, alto saxophone, acoustic guitar, and vocals. <laughs> the whole damn orchestra showed up. <laughs> dude god dang oh my god this is like this is oh oh <laughs> oh my god let's go i love that yeah i i had heard it was recorded live before and like they just and one of the parts i love about it is how they just transition so smoothly between songs too like yeah. a lot of the time yeah. and it just it carries that energy like on the like call the arms that part you quoted it could almost just be like he he was like thinking of it on the spot and he knew the horns were about to come in and he just starts yeah. freaking busting it out and it's like dang <laughs> yeah there's a lot of energy God. behind it which i love it adds there to it so much 
Yeah. It feels Ugh. it feels insane the jump to the last track on the album, but like when it's that track, it's just like when that came on for the first time, I was like, I because I wasn't I wasn't listening to the lyrics, which is like I think my favorite part of the album is like what he's actually saying, um, mm. and I so I wasn't listening to it terribly. I was kind of letting it play in the background on my first couple of listens, and on my first listen specifically, "Call the Arms" comes in and the horns are fucking like. I mean, we could talk about that at length. Just, yeah. Like, Holy shit, my body's moving, and it's yeah, not. I'm I, not doing it I on purpose. I had to do this. I had to do this <laughs> every like, time I heard that song. I was like, dan, dan, yeah. dan, 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 dan. And before I forget, it. before I forget, Rocio had a take about this song in particular, sounding mm. like an anime opening. And <laughs> okay. It, it, like I likened it to Cowboy Bebop's uh, soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Like That's it's good. super cool, especially when the, the guitars uh, come in and start, you know, kind of assaulting your ears. Yeah, I can um, see it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's cool. Like in chase scenes and like fight scenes, you could just put that in the background and it would flow so well. Oh, That's nice. Yeah, it gets you hyped. Oh, up. Yeah, I can I can absolutely see. I mean, the the lyrics don't necessarily follow with like any random action movie. Um, maybe they do no. depending on the action movie. But like a chase scene, something like that, with those like the whole orchestra popping off like that in the background would be nuts in a movie. That'd be so cool. Yeah. Ah. Uh, for sure. It's a do band, we... not an orchestra. A band, you're right. Sure. You're right. I, made, you're right. I made that mistake you're earlier. You're correct. Yeah, I made that mistake earlier. Yeah. Do we want to sort of go so, do what we did with Ari? Just, you know, it was only nine tracks. Just sort of go through it a little bit like that. Yeah, man. Uh, this, sure. album, this album was yeah. excruciatingly long, bro. Like 39 <laughs> minutes. Like, oh my mm -hmm. God. Insanely long. I was like, I was like, oh shit. I could fly through this like so fast. It was, it was so Hold like. Up. Mm -hmm. 39 minutes this my boy this is like 38 40. minutes and 54 seconds <laughs> <laughs> actually i'll do 10, I'll do 10 push ups actually off. i'll do 10 push ups off pod for the for the mistake i apologize yeah You're i think right. that's what you need to do to make it right so i can start wearing make it right so i can start wearing t-shirts like david does <laughs> jesus you gotta hey, man. uh yeah so so the first so, yeah, track is like welcome to, to earth top. welcome to earth yeah. polywog do you polywog. guys know what a polywog is I do. Do you? I do. Uh, I sort of, yeah, like sort I of. Wanna, thing. I don't want to guess wrong, but kind of like you know, uh, like a it's, it's sort of like a you know fish term, but also like a new sailor, like polywog, like a young frog or something. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's like a another term for a tadpole, and it's also okay. like a sailor that hasn't fully crossed the equator. Yes. So he uh, hasn't like done his his uh, due diligence in terms of getting on the seas, the high that's seas. Cool. That's cool. Which yeah. it's uh, cool. Then I guess we can say it now that Sturgill was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. He'll talk about later, but yeah. for three years. Yeah, yeah definitely so. put that up top because he definitely <laughs> pulls on those experiences heavily, and there's a whole song exclusively about that. So I Plays got the sea theme. stories. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when well, Welcome to Earth is great. It comes in with the intro, just like sea sounds, and you get the piano. It's a very dramatic you like, opening. You like you're at the harbor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love spraying on your face. I love mm -hmm. it. He's uh, he's just singing his heart out, dropping these great lines about, you know, about I've been told you measure man by how much he loves, you know. Grandfather always said God was a fisherman. Dang. Yeah. I could I could quote this song like crazy. And then... Wish I'd done this 10 years ago. Yeah. No, because it's so but, perfectly heartfelt mm -hmm. towards his kid. It's so... Yeah. It's so warm. Yeah. It, it is the but, inception. Can, like, wait... The cover art, by the way, oh, like before we get into that, holy okay. shit, that is baller! Like, yeah. it looks like yeah. a damn like, metal album. Uh huh. Yeah. It looks like it's coming like straight out of Moby Dick or something like that. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 that's facts. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, there's a be, there's uh, like a, a sea monster on the bottom too. If you haven't noticed yeah. that, it's insane. It's crazy. Yeah, like, I, love I, I want that to be on my wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm all about the the effort put into the album art for sure. It's great. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it kind of lets you know what you're getting into in a certain type of way. Same with the title, "A Sailor's Guide to Earth." Like, that, yeah. it's so cool. Like to think about that in hindsight, because I, I, yeah. it like it just brushed off me when I first heard the album. But mm -hmm. you go back to it and you're like, "Wow, this is cool." Yeah, this is like, really, his guide to Earth, like to his son, is welcoming his son to Earth on the very first track. It, it's a, it's, it's a great sentiment that, like, you know, I, I wish I'd known it would be this easy. Like, it seems like he had his son and he finally figured out like life and what it's mm -hmm. about like he you know he talks about later like he was kicked out of the navy he's freaking like trying to score off a futon or whatever and then it's just yep. like yeah clearly futon, gone like air raft or something like that yeah yeah i guess well. his way of saying an air mattress 
<laughs> yeah, got the. Uh, it definitely he has like the blue collar experience. I think he was working for the railroad until he quit yep. to do music. He yeah, did so. that, and then he also waited tables at IHOP before or when he moved <laughs> back to Kentucky. He's okay. been through some shit. Yeah, yeah, working man, been through a lot of stuff. Yeah, and bringing that you know into that sentiment, and then when the, oh man, I can't. I don't know if I had heard this song before I listened to the album. I don't think so. Because when that instrumentation kicks in, you're like, yeah. Baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sometimes <laughs> that it has to go away. I love that man. Yeah. I I, uh, yeah. I can dance to that honestly in some weird way, some weird awkward way. But I won't do the it right now. <laughs> yeah, some sort of square yeah, it dance. Is, it is interesting. Square dance. Square dance. Square dance. The, the instrumentation is like largely like on the happy side but the lyrics are pretty somber because he's talking about having to leave his family for months at a time and like telling his son mm -hmm. like i mean that's what he goes back to over and over again is like this time spent away from you and if i the the whole album kind of reads as like he's very aware of his own mortality because polywog in my research is always is also a i don't know if he did this on purpose or if this came to be whichever way but it's a little known it's a little used slang for a boy who grew up without a father and therefore had to hmm. raise himself oh wow um so i don't know if that's i, I assume it was intentional because it's kind of very directly related to the fact that he's like leaving a letter to his son in the form of this album so that he can like posthumously like educate his son were something to happen or anything like that um yeah so that was super interesting to me but yeah there's a, they, there's like a bar said, on the it is almost danceable, even though it's super somber. Mm -hmm. There's a bar at the very end where, it, when I get home, it breaks my heart seeing how much you've grown all on your own. I was like, yeah, yeah, geez. always. I pulled up yeah. my heart yeah, I was man. like, damn, man. But, yeah, this album hits my soul a lot. Yeah, That's, it's this uh, is white soul for sure. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, it, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it hits, you know. He he can say stuff pretty simply, but just the emotion behind it. The way it's you know crafted. Sometimes it takes a lot of skill to write a simple bar too. It just yeah. hits you right, like hits you deep. So, yeah, I don't know. That that's one of my favorites on the album. Though. I I can't. It's hard for me to. We can talk about that maybe later on. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, favorites. It's. I do think it's, it's one kinda, of my favorites too. Oh, okay. Nice. Hype, cool, hype. cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that second. The second half of that song is is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The and then it kind of does mm -hmm. a weird tonal shift to the second song. Mm, um, because right. it, yeah. it like yeah the first half of welcome to earth is a little slow and then it you know it, it picks up or whatever and then it comes back down again mm -hmm. like super super slow yeah. very solemn um, yeah it's he, he so, he's soft i don't i don't know what to call it because he has like two different voices like he's got <laughs> a very soft somber voice that he he just croons a little bit and then he's got his belting voice <laughs> i remember like when you voice. first yeah, you first listened to this album, you were like, uh, I like it, but I don't like the songs where he's doing his teddy bear voice. <laughs> and I say, Yeah, yeah, and fair to enough. Be, honestly, it's still tough for me. Mm. Like, uh, Breaker's Roar is like not not my favorite for sure. Okay, uh, yeah, def definitely like multiple listens have given me more appreciation for it, but that's cool. Mm -hmm. I could see got beautiful instrumentation. I just, yeah, that's um. That's definitely the the hurdle of of the voice, like Alex talked about, the country voice was actually like weirdly not there as much as I expected it to be, um, because I mean, a lot of what I made fun of, I mean, I put it on for the big green tractor bit, was like the twang and the like the the country southern twang, and they like lean super hard into it for like seemingly no reason in a lot of the songs, um, mm -hmm. like random country artists, um, but. Sturgill, which when you, I'm going to ask Trevor for the episode number because he'll remember it weirdly. Um, way back when you put keeping between the keep it between the lines as your as your track of the week, um, I listened to it and then recommended back to you, which I'm not sure if you've listened to uh, Little Feet, which is a band that my dad introduced me to forever ago um, mm -hmm. that he used to listen to when he was like our age, basically. Um, and it was, it's actually really funny because his, his dad was like, what's that racket you're making up there? But it just like, sounds like this. Like he was just like, that's not music. That's just noise or whatever. Like that's like this type of music is what he, is what my dad's parents generation was saying about it. So it's, it's really we funny love, how that cycle continues. We um, love gatekeepers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I used to, I used to listen to that album, which is uh, waiting for Columbus, which is a live version of, of live compilation of some of their songs. 
um, with my dad um, going back from to and from Brockton Rocks game. Um, so I just wanted to share that little moment and say shout out to my dad. Um, because the he- the lead singer of Little Feet sounds very, very much like Sterl Simpson. Um, yeah. Like weirdly so. And I don't know if you can corroborate that, David, or if I'm insane, but... Um, I, having, I mean, I I sent it to you like months ago. I was I was still in Miami, so that was literal months ago. Um, mm. But I'll, I'll send it to you after, and you can confirm whether or not I'm I'm crazy off pod. But yeah, sure, yeah. The, the lead singer of Little Feet sounds has this same sort of country rock style and um and the same like type of voice. So it was like weirdly not a hurdle I had to get over, which was which and enabled me to like the album a lot more. Yep. But is he honorable though? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Probably not. Who knows? Yeah. Um, who knows? Man. I, yeah. I, I imagine he had to get knighted with like a, a, a KFC drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something else. Um, perfect. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a. I think it's per- one of those per- like perfect. key to the city type ceremonies. Um, the I got the key to the city. I got the key yeah, to the breakers, city. Breakers. Roar, I, that I, 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 I think Breakers Roar I, I love um, because mm-hmm. of what he's talking about. He's talking about his struggles with, you know, mental health and everything, which is, you know, he shows a side of country which basically doesn't exist to my knowledge of like being vulnerable. And, and I mean, they talk about heartbreak and loneliness and stuff like that, but never like, you know, um, like struggling with your inner demons and like wrestling with life and death and your own mortality and, and depression and other mental illness and stuff like that. And so he's like really vulnerable and, and speaks a lot of truth in, in a lot of those I def- songs. I, I wouldn't go that far, but, but yeah, it, it is go far in what respect. Um, saying that no country like artist did that. Cause I'm sure John yeah, Cat has album cool with that. I think but. I, I want to, did I qualify by saying that I've heard? Yeah, maybe, but because that's that's that, what I meant to say is like no, nothing yeah. that I've heard, which is obviously a small pool, but to my knowledge, like popularized country music doesn't do a lot of that. Um, which is yeah, I think um, country is one of those genres where there's a very real distinction between. I mean, there's even there's like the Nashville sound, like you know, in Nashville, Tennessee, like they yeah. literally crank out like manufactured country artists. Like there's a whole system behind it, and mm-hmm. that's how you get like vast majority of the country stars that make it big. So there's a, a a real reason why, like, you know, definitely like Trevor was saying, if you go back to Johnny Cash or whatever, or, you know, like the song I recommended, you know, there's the, I don't know, you know, the authentic, like, down-to-earth country. That's It's just like, to me, it's just like the polar opposite of the, the pop stuff. What's, yeah. yeah, man. So yeah, this totally album is, uh, is opening that gate and helping me change my view. So welcome to the Unboxing Life podcast where we do that regularly. <laughs> welcome that to the entire point yeah. of this. Yes, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm with so, you. I love Breakers Roar. I mean, we're pretty so much I, done with it. I but love, I love the, but I love the, uh, the, the like long ass, um, like drawn out guitar notes that just like make me want to stare at a night sky. It's like it's just so peaceful. Yeah. Um, for what the song is. Yeah, it's like a somber night song. He's just you know mm-hmm. talking about it, some real stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> I, uh, you know, we're getting to the next one though, and the next one is. That. Brother, this is one of those songs that I was saying that if you have ears, you must like. <laughs> and I'm saying that firmly. So don't fuck with it, bro. <laughs> this is keep it between the lines, brother. Don't yes, turn mailboxes into baseballs. Don't get busted <laughs> selling at 17. This True. third bar, though, most thoughts deserve about two or three more. That got me. That's good. Mm. That got me. That was that was really good. I didn't even hear that bar. See, I haven't exactly. I haven't heard all that. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you read these mm-hmm. lyrics, it, yeah. your appreciation for the album skyrocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was. This is probably the one I'm least able to understand what he's saying. Probably. Are you really? Yeah, for me, like his voice wow. is least discernible. But he's he's saying dope stuff, and he has like a incredibly dope. Yeah, it, it's a cool like. You know, well, he even says, "Do as I say, you know, don't do as I've done," which could be an annoying message. But he's saying like, you know, don't get busted. It don't have to be like your father, like his yeah, like I actually did some dumb stuff. Like here's here's put you on some game. Like great. I was reading his wiki page, and he was like, or he I guess sold. Uh, he had to sell drugs at seventeen, and you know, got busted for that. So. <laughs> he he's been through a lot of shit. Yeah, <laughs> it was uh, it was funny. The the genius lyric for that for that bar about not getting caught is like. Sturgill is talking about not selling drugs at all, not not getting caught selling drugs. <laughs> like he's like advising his son not to sell at all, not 
to not get caught by the police if you can follow Thank that you, like genius. it's yeah. like thanks genius yeah that's literally yeah. thanks genius um yeah so yeah no, is... that was funny another another shout out to my dad though is uh do as i say not as i do is a piece of advice i've literally received from my own father um there you go. Most, I think everyone spe- most, has, yeah. most specifically <laughs> when i was learning the drive um because he was like he was like if you do this you're gonna fail your test so like i'm, I'm doing this but don't do this yeah yeah that was like, a classic one when yeah. driving yeah I think one of the things I heard, you know, he says, stay in school, don't do drugs. I was like, that is a str- That's when I heard it. That's when I knew. That's uh-huh. a strong message. <laughs> exactly. Know? Keep between the lines. Keep the yeah, strong I mean, fundamentals, man. Yeah. Yeah. Every every bar is just is basically a, a message to his son of advice of, you know, do this. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. if there's any well. doubt, if there's any doubt, then there is no doubt. The gut don't never lie. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's more advice, but it's like fun. You know, a bunch of different advice yeah. that's like all put in there, and it's just the horns. Just ew, maybe they make it so much. Oh like, my god! Ooh. And the fucking saxophone is crazy on this too. Don't forget that. Yeah, the dude. The saxophone like, like accompanies the horns, and it's just like nuts. Like it's, it's very <laughs> nice. Just like Trevor yeah. and any any song with horns. It's like <laughs> locked tight. Honestly, yeah, that's that's my bread and yeah. butter, man. I feel I mean, you on that. That's why I, I, I love Touch the Sky so much. I absolutely mm. cannot hate you for it. The horns go crazy. That's for sure. Yeah. The way it comes in from Breaker's Roar, which is like so subtle and quiet. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, but da 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 da. And it's just. Like, <laughs> <laughs> brother. I was, I was telling Rosio yeah. that the saxophone sounded like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And the. That's cool. Cool. The horn down the track is is what most reminded me of of Little Feet because they have they they were famous at the time for having yeah. their whole horn section and everything. I gotta go back and make sure I heard that for sure. I might have neglected um, that. I can recommend you also, having listened to this whole thing. I can recommend you a couple very specifically that are similar. So yeah, yeah. Also the uh, guitar solo on here that's like it's got the dual harmonics, so they're playing two different scales at the same mm-hmm. time. That's how Avenge does most of their uh, guitar solos. Mm. that's like their imprint that's like what they brought to the game but it's mm. it's so cool to hear it that's dope yeah i wouldn't see i don't even pick up on stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. for a song that's just childhood and teenage advice it's weird that it bangs as hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely banger <laughs> certified hood banger yeah uh right. definitely a top tier one on the album for me as well uh it's number two also i'm on the i'm on the uh it's number two for me as well I'm on the <laughs> fucking genius site and it's there's only one comment on this and it's hey there and it's got four downvotes. <laughs> <laughs> hey there. What the heck? The I'm surprised you didn't like come back and be like, why am I getting downvoted? <laughs> why? <laughs> wow. Uh, all, all four wow. down all four downvotes are Alex on separate accounts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> why you gotta air my man out like that? Uh, that's hilarious. I don't know. Frick that. We moving on to C stories. Frick that. Yeah, we on to C stories. Uh, the most, right. the most country like, it's probably yeah. the most country song on here. Like I can straight agree up, with it. it's straight very up. like yeah, like. Okay, it's got the driving this, drums country, tempo yeah. never changes. Yeah, his voice is so like, dang. <laughs> I don't know. It's yeah, a great. It's... Yeah. Go ahead. No, finish. Finish. I don't know. It, it's it's uh, he he just brings a lot of that experience. I, I remember. I think one of the first lyrics I cut the album because I wasn't expecting it from a country album when, is when he was like, "Maybe get high, play a little gold and I." That yeah! old sixty four. <laughs> like, that old sixty four. That old sixty four. Like a freaking country singer is hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. He and then he, you know he's listing like these like East Asian countries he's been to. Dude, the stuff. whole the whole third verse like. Bro, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The, nothing has ever sounded more like gibberish to me than a country singer listing East Asian cities, like <laughs> yeah. countries. Like he it just like I was like I I read the lyrics. I was like, oh, he's listing cities and country. I was like, oh, that's what because it just sounded like fucking nothing until I read it. Yeah, I was like, I heard, what is going I heard on here? Tokyo. I heard Tokyo. I heard Shibuya, and I heard yeah. Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Well, you hear, <laughs> yeah, you hear Tokyo because that's obviously like one of the ones that will hit your ear and then he just lists all the rest of them and i'm like i i need to look at this and i was like oh they're all other cities or, or country like i was like oh my god that he's at, he's not saying any any bars he's just listing them it was, yeah. it was so accidentally funny to me um and then he yeah i mean that 
it's just a chronicles of his time in the navy i love the the verse the the chorus i think is like they're all true like i got sea stories they're all true why would i lie <laughs> like is is really yeah. funny to me um yeah but yeah he talks about i think the one of my favorite lines off of that is seen the seen damn seen damn near the whole damn world from the inside of a bar which is like mm-hmm. that he he just globe hopped from like port to port but he was just spending most of his time at the bar so it was like yeah. a lot of his experiences are colored by that um, but he talks about there's a line in there that he talks about um, playing Connect Four against prostitutes in Thailand. Yep, <laughs> which <laughs> yeah. apparently is, which is the really thing funny. That they do. Yeah, oh, okay. and apparently the prostitutes are really good at Connect Four, according to Genius, according to like a a seven That's uploaded a thing? thing on Genius. But it had a, it had a whole link to 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 like Connect Four being a popular bar game in Thailand. So that was that was interesting. You, that what, I what a little rabbit win? hole. Uh, <laughs> you get a happy why don't ending, you I guess. why don't you go and find oh. out alex and report yes. back I'm to like, unboxing like, and, thailand and, and let us know story. alex Please. unbox thailand yeah <laughs> some exotic pussy check okay. check, out our, uh, check out our vlog channel coming soon Jeez. yeah god i literally connected four wow okay <laughs> is that mad yeah Thank goodness jesus yeah that's um yeah hey, it's he that's uh cool. no. <laughs> Sorry, being interrupted Reaching by the cat. Yeah, yeah. When yeah she's I screaming right now. Shout out, shout out to Uno. Uno, baby. <laughs> shout out. What were you saying, David? No, it's a good. I think it has a great opening line and a great closing line too. It's uh, I have the lyrics brought up. I know it's gonna make me look like the freaking cast with the ghost, but uh. <laughs> I have it. If you, just, you, want to... you just need some <laughs> yeah. more warm lighting in front of you, man. That's all I'll say. Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, basically, it was just like Papa says: keep your mouth shut and you'll be fine. Just another enlisted egg in the bowl for Uncle Sam's beater. And then at the end, he's talking about the end. I didn't see. I didn't freaking hear it until Trevor was like, "Look at the lyrics." And I, there was something that I always was curious about because I could pick up most of the other stuff. And then I was like, "Man, what is he saying?" Because he just like he goes past the normal like verse you would expect and just says like two lines and then it's mm-hmm. it's yep. a flying eye beats dying for lies and a politician's war which uh I mean, which he builds up to in the, is... like, the last four bar like he gets kicked out of the navy you'll uh-huh. spend the next year trying to score and then he like the next 15 trying to figure out what the hell you did that for like he's like, yep. like he's having regrets mm-hmm. like even joining the the military anyway yeah, yeah he's he's yeah. basically outright trying to tell his son like don't do what i did because he, he there's a line about like joining the navy just to i don't know if it's this song or another one but about joining the navy to pay your rent or like it's it's like that uh, you yeah. won't you won't find rent out on a boat somewhere which is about him joining the navy to like make the money he needs to do whatever um and so he's like vehemently telling his son like don't go into the army or the navy or the armed forces at all like don't do what i did Mm -hmm. and it's like it it was surprising to me to see especially a country singer be so like anti-war and anti like not not anti the troops right like we don't we don't badmouth the people who are actually making these sacrifices but like the policies that send them to countries to die for no reason that's what we're against and so he makes that point like very concisely and and well and and about talking about those first few lines about how joining the army just strips your individuality away entirely um yeah and for, and for what reason is is the point he goes on to make so it was really cool to me um seeing that sentiment be made by you know especially a country singer um but at all i guess because i don't see that a lot in music yeah i hit you with stuff you don't expect from a country album for sure yeah so yeah. yeah and it's sharing his experiences with a purpose um absolutely how do y'all feel about in bloom though Might be... okay, wait 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 i wanted okay. to have some fun with this one <laughs> because like but then i figured like i'm hearing that you guys already looked a genius so you i wanted to ask cameron specifically if he knew like what this song like was beforehand uh, like did you know of this song do I beforehand know in bloom by nirvana yes okay. is your okay. question yes that's my question you're you're open you're disrespecting me in a public forum right now you realize that yeah Okay, fuck you. I'm just yes. making sure. Yes, I I was <laughs> eight sure. years I was eight years old jamming out to rock band on the PS2 playing in Bloom by Nirvana. Yes. Oh, okay. And you okay. and you were not a a fucking music listener after that, bro. How? How? Yeah. Uh, it's more complicated than I'd make it seem. Oh. But also not at all. But anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know what in Bloom by Nirvana is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dang. 
another I, uh, unexpected. I do not like this cover, though. Okay. It, it, that's, definitely, that's it definitely surprised the fuck out of me, if you're going to say unexpected. It definitely surprised the fuck yeah. out of me when I started. I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> Did you catch I, it on first listen? Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm. Because, like I said, I played that song like a billion times on freaking Rockstar as a kid. So I was like, I was like, okay, this is it, like, what is he doing here? Like, I was just confused because mm. I wasn't looking at the track list, so I didn't see In Bloom written on it. Um, so yeah. yeah. Anyway, David, take it away. Because you. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I uh, I like this song. Um, I like the instrumentation, especially at the end. So the like end it, is great. Yeah, yeah. But it's probably my least favorite song on here, especially because it's a cover that if usually if you do, I think he pulls off the cover, honestly, like pretty well. But um, it's usually not going to be my favorite song if it's unless they completely make it their own, which they which he did. The, yeah. That's the thing is that he literally yeah. did like which I totally commend him for. Like most covers yeah. are really bland and they, they just basically sap the energy off of the original track. Yeah. And it's like, why are you covering this if it's the same fucking song? Like you haven't you haven't <laughs> done anything to alter it at all. Like that's not what a cover should be for. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he absolutely did that. I just don't think that the first two minutes are worth listening through to get to the last forty seconds that he actually like brings in energy. Like it's just it's so painfully slow. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. What I was what I was gonna say earlier, which you told me to stop in pre production, um, was that in the genius lyrics when you click into it um it talks about how briefly about how he apparently wrote a letter to um to nirvana's uh record label or whoever whoever's in charge of their music right now um and said like you know i'm i'm planning on doing this can i do this and i'm gonna change the last lyric of the or the last line of the verse and make it say um he doesn't know what it means to love someone as opposed to and, oh, I, cool. they, and he don't know when I say yeah is like the Nirvana lyric, um, mm-hmm. and so apparently Sturgill, listening to Nirvana, misheard the lyric from Nirvana as what he sings it as in the show, <laughs> in the show, in the, in the song, in the show. In the show. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. juggling a lot of things mentally and I'm struggling. Thanks. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So so he misheard the lyric and then rewrote and then wrote the song and performed it as he misheard the lyric initially and apparently Mm. included all of that in his letter to the the record label um and they obviously gave him permission because the song is is there um and so yeah he did his his own little spin on it on and so that song exists and that line exists because of a misheard lyric so there you go i do like that change i like it i think it goes with the theme of the album so i do too yeah yeah yeah. If I covered a num- numerous songs, they would definitely have m- a lot of misheard lyrics. So. <laughs> that is <Right>. true. <laughs> yeah, that will happen. Dang. How do you feel about those, Alex? Have you heard the you've oh, heard yeah. the original in Bloom? I assume. No. You have no. not. No. Really, never. Uh-huh. No, and Cameron's yeah. acting like this is disrespectful. Like, <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I'm just so uh, popularized. I don't know. I'm just chilling. Uh, maybe I well, have. It's probably because you played it on that video game. So I, d- I, mean. I definitely heard it outside of that. Of course. I might, it's on maybe the radio. I have. I might have, but like I don't realize I have. So maybe yeah. if I heard it, I don't know. But as yeah. to my knowledge, it is a, it's, a, it's a complete 180 from this one. So yeah. <laughs> it is very different. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like how David was saying. I mean, it, it's not like super standout as to me, but but if you're saying like it's a cover of this nirvana song and he made it his own that's definitely something that's hard to to do to take yeah. up or something original and make it your own that's part of making music but if you do it well then it's like you gotta respect him either way mm-hmm. yeah i'm Very... just not a person that runs towards covers in the first place so yeah that's i'd much rather just hear it. like the same with remixes like uh, yeah it, it's like the, the it's like the rare one that stands out a lot but yeah yeah Usually not. Um, ma- massive irony, which is crazy to me right now. Um, my mom, brother, and his girlfriend are upstairs, and they're waiting on for me to have dinner with them after we're done with these episodes. Um, but they have just started playing music, and the first song they played is "Smells Like Teen Spirit" by Nirvana. <laughs> Dang. Is, like I'm now here. I'm hearing "Smells Like Teen Spirit" through my basement door, and I'm like, I don't know if this is some. Yeah, exactly. You know what, so that that was crazy. I, I just I thought I was tripping for a good like ten seconds there. But, <laughs> I'll um, tell you what. Anyway. A, a side note, though. A side, side note. Over. You must have a really great 
You must have a really great family to wait for you to eat dinner until uh, 2 a.m. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. Be a it's gonna be a minute. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be we'll be fine. We'll be fine. They're uh they're taking their time making it all, so that's fine. Okay. Anyway, okay. moving on. On a track yeah. six, which is the first Brace single release from his album. Ah, I did not know that. Race for Impact, Live a Little. Love Live. that title. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool a very cool uh metaphor for preparing mm-hmm. for death by living your life and you know, bracing for impact on a Brace ship. Brace for impact. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't even see it. Good on you. I like that. <laughs> yep. Cool one, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. I, I think these these three songs in the middle here, ending with this one, are my least favorite stretch of the album. But I'm a fan of all of them, personally. Damn, okay. I love Brace for Impact. I do, yeah. It's tough, man. I mean, but I, it's it's one of my least favorite, but I still like it a lot. It's it's a great message, like I think we mentioned. Like, Yeah, that second yeah. verse is great with the... Uh, he just basically describes different ways that people go out of this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some screaming like a baby and, you know, uh, begging for forgiveness for something you did. So yeah, welcome, man. Cool. Yeah, yeah, like, that kind message. of makes you ponder, like, how you're going to go out. Like, yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting how it's like a single, but it still yeah. works on the album. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. What, yeah. It's weird because, like, listening to this album, this isn't the song I would pick for a single. Not like at, at all. all. Yeah. I'm going to keep it between the lines like all day. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that was one too or not. Or call but, arms. Yeah, I could see different ones. It's it's kinda it's kinda different, but it's more it's a little more standard like rock country to me, maybe. Yeah. That might be that might be why I like it a little less, but it's still got a great like minute and a half of instrumentation that just rides out at the end though. Yeah, you gotta love those instrumentation, just the solos or the instrumental instrumental breaks that they hit just God dang, the band yeah, goes those crazy. Are, those are absolutely, crazy. I think, some of my favorite parts in the album. Um, when it's just yeah, like sure. minute swaths of just the band doing what they do, just and you just kind of you just kind of sit back and let it happen, like let it wash over you, kind of. It's like this is this is real nice. Like I'm in a I'm in a good headspace. Like this is I'm gonna yeah. It's just yeah. sonic. And this is why nice. I love this is why I like I love instrumental albums so much is because like it allows the instrumentation to breathe and like be a little more creative versus having to stay in jail in terms of like keeping with the the lyrics and you know having this pop structure of your songs that you can just basically yeah. do whatever the fuck you want with it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, cuz the instrument the instrumental you just hear your ears are listening to every instrument that's playing. You don't have the distraction of the vocals there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know you notice the nuances of it all. This yeah. this album definitely yeah. deserves like an instrument or an instrumental version where the, the lyrics are where the vocals are stripped. Uh, that that sounds ho- horrible to say because you know he does his thing on this album, but yeah. I would love to hear just the instrumentation as well. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah, it's great. It's uh yeah. I think uh next one coming up is one of my favorites as well. Although I'll say that for probably five out of four out of nine songs. <laughs> That's That's probably probably yeah, I, I love all. Oh wait, so wait, so you said the the three tracks that you like were kind of ant. You included sea stories in that. I'm not to be clear. I'm not ant. They're just my personal, probably my lowest ones on the album. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I do like that. I love sea stories, honestly. But you're that's saying the that's best not. Of the three. But it's but not saying... in my top tier. Yeah. Wow. Okay. But I thought I I I thought for sure you were you were referring to all around you. Oh no no! All around you is beautiful though. Yeah, th- yeah. Some great I, strings. It's uh yeah the horns come in just like it's I think this uh, he released like a video for this too as like a single which makes sense it's like uh it's a very soulful like almost simple song it's not gonna it's but it's just amazing lyrics I love it freaking it it was it's a it's a such a comforting song because he's talking about like uh you know what like. You have days where the sun doesn't shine. You have nights that go on forever and stuff. And and you know, and then he's saying to his son, like you know, long after I'm gone, I'll still be around. And our and bond it's, is it's, eternal. Yeah, our bond is eternal, and so is love. God is inside you, all around you, and up above, which is a great conception of God. I think you know, if you're gonna think of that in it, that think of it in that way, like you know, it's inside you too. Like, um, it's pretty great. Um, very touching song to me for sure um i, I love i just love the way he leans in the, all around you like, <laughs> yeah yeah that's my favorite part of the song 
for yeah, the, the two bits. The vocals go crazy. That's yeah, a fantastic overall message of like, you know, life sucks sometimes, but through my experiences, I think it's overall good more than it's overall bad. And, you know, you take the punches as they come and you roll with them. And then, you know, if you, if you play it right, you know, you can enjoy your life. And so that was great. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Race for Impact 2 was, was like that as well, where it's like, you know, hmm. there's this inevitability of, of death. So, like, that's always the finish line. The finish line isn't changing. So do what you will before you get there and enjoy that as much as possible. Like, those are great messages to me, which is, I, I love, once I looked up the lyrics, made me love these songs so much more. Hmm. I love that uh, that saying when it's like, every gravestone is the same, there's a date on the left, there's a date on the right, but what you do in the middle is is totally up to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that shit always strikes home for me. And I, I, I'm yeah. such a sucker for like lyrics that tell you to just live a little. Yeah. yeah. Cause you, you really, yeah. you can get caught up in these everyday routines and just like completely lose track of like what makes this so gorgeous. Like mm-hmm. just go outside, look, look around. Like it, it's, you're going to be gone eventually. So don't stress yeah. out about the small stuff. Like keep between the lines ends with don't sweat small stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. It's a prevalent theme in this album. So yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Which has, it, Cause definitely this song ties in with like brace for impact. And I, I always think this song ties in with breakers roar to me because yeah. breakers roar is saying like, there's, if you look around, there's like love that will like soothe you and heal your wounds and stuff. And that's all around you is like, you know, you can let go of the pain if you choose to like, you know, this stuff is all around you. Like very, uh, you know, it's not like obviously you're gonna have problems. Obviously, maybe you know this isn't gonna solve everyone's problems. But that mentality of looking at life like there's so much beautiful stuff. There's people who love each other. There's people who are you know good people that are gonna help you out. Just like very great fundamental message to hammer home, even if you've heard it before. Like absolutely, yeah, I think it's super great and heartwarming and nice. Well said. Yeah, but hard to agree. I need to know. What you think about this next song? Oh, because oh, <laughs> we shall oh. see. You, you being who? Get it? <laughs> y'all, 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 all of y'all. The royal, the royal. I like y'all. this. This is a this is a story. Or this is a song written to his wife specifically. Oh, sir. Um, yep. It was actually I'm reading off the genius lyric or the genius thing. It was actually written in 2010 when he was in his other band before he went solo called Sunday Valley, hmm. which I was reading about, they performed for like eight years from like Oh four to 2012. And then yeah. he, you know, went on and did his own thing, but I guess he just took this song and just kind of incorporated it. Like how Royce did with black history on uh prime Two. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty great. Yeah. It's uh one of the, it was it was always one I honestly forgot was on the album when I was listening to it for the first time, like a, a few times, and then so I'm like, oh yeah, Call the Arms is next, but you get this one <laughs> oh, first, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but like it starts out so subtle and slow. It's it's one of the more subtle ones on here, and it's just the strings that come in, those plug strings and everything, and then he mm. finally starts. What? How does he start? It's like you know. Oh Sarah, here we go again. I can't mm-hmm. get past the pain of what I want to say to you. Yeah, he, he's talking about like his. Like, I guess I guess he's just has a lot of abandonment issues, so he's he's very troubled when it comes to intimacy and and learning mm-hmm. to be vulnerable with his wife. So he's right, a damn fucking song about it. And then she song. comes in in the second set of bars and just like, "Hey yo, <laughs> let me love you." <laughs> yeah, like you know, if it's anything you need to say, say it now. Like you know, I can get on with my life. You can go on with your strife. I wish you'd speak those words. Those eyes are trying to say. That is powerful. It's, that is so powerful. It's it's like a song about being vulnerable and him like literally learning to, you know, like he's, you know, I'm a man, you know, it's, you know, there's a whole thing with, you know, culture and, you know, men being <clears throat> not allowed to be vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and Which I'm glad we're stripping away because that was like yeah. incredibly toxic. <clears throat> I can agree. I can agree. Yeah. For yourself, like just, ugh. Yeah. I, I hated that fucking social construct. <laughs> Always hated it. Yeah, you're gonna end up. I, I still like, hate the. I still hate the like the solid ideas. Like, I'll bring it to some stupid point. Like, um, my aunt fucking last night. I was she was out for me a beer, and I was like, yeah, I'm not really a beer drinker, but I do like seltzers. And she's like, oh, my boys call those like like girl drinks, and I'm like, cool, ah, like, cool, <laughs> like, thanks. It's like, yeah. what does that mean? Like, <laughs> it's yeah, no, I mean, especially the, the, you're drinking the, yourself into. Uh, 
into a weight weight uh belly there buddy yeah i'm cool i'm way cool man yeah. keep going <laughs> yeah the uh the the idea of like not drinking a fruity drink or whatever because it looks like girly or like oh it's fruity it's like and you're just enjoying incredibly your beer that kinda tastes terrible it's like bro like maybe enjoy your night a little bit it's like, incred- yeah like worry of- about yourself how about yeah. that and then i'll live my life and we'll, we'll have of- a good time if you do that instead of you being all hard looking at me in the corner with a beer and your beer nuts <laughs> go suck these beer nuts how about that yes you can find if- them under a book <laughs> Uh, the uh, Callback. yeah, if you if you like beer and whiskey, that's fine, but like, I don't have to. I don't beer takes tastes like everyone piss. knows it tastes piss. like stale piss, everyone knows it, but some people get used to it. It's like, piss. <laughs> it's like, I'm good with it, yeah. and that's fine. I can drink a beer from time to time, but yeah, man, what the heck? It's yeah. dumb, it's toxic, it's annoying. If, if we're Forget at the bar, it. If we're at the bar and I'm sipping a beer and Trevor's doing whatever and he's like, yo, Cam, you want to sex on the beach? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I want to sex on the beach. Of course, Let's man. Yeah. Bro. Hell yeah. yeah. I'll drink, I'll, yeah, strawberry daiquiri with a yeah. freaking yeah. rainbow umbrella in it and a piece of pineapple. <laughs> and, like, I'll go straight <laughs> for it. Fuck yeah. Sounds, sounds great. Live like, come your on, life, yes. kings. Come on, Do what man. makes you happy. Don't worry about those Live your life. suckers. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. And that's, that's why the song is so beautiful. Oh my god, this this is one of my favorites. This, so my the reason I was like, let's see what you think is this might be my favorite song on the album. Um, okay, yeah, it's it's a it's just one that had to grow on me so much so that like to, to where it grew on me to a point where I just couldn't not love it. And it just the this, the lyrics stick with me so hard. Like you know, one of my favorite lines on the album is like, I know sometimes it seem a little crazy. But yep. goddamn, sometimes, sometimes crazy, crazy is how I feel. feel. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> we all feel a little crazy sometimes. Dude, like, I didn't hear that the entire time until I li- looked at the lyrics. And I'm like, yeah. bro, are you serious? <laughs> yes, bro. That, he says it with so much like heartfelt energy. Like, goddamn, baby, this is how I feel. Like, I know. I feel like that, that, couldn't, that line couldn't be delivered in any genre better than country. Just like, goddamn, sometimes crazy is how I feel. And it's just like, but, but then it's like, you get this. Cause he's, it's like the song is he's finally able to talk to her about how he feels, like in a way, at least through the song. And then it's like, after that, you get this beautiful thing about, you know, how my brain starts to swirl. But, you know, the thing that like saves me is like the love that I feel in your arms. It's like all this stuff is just like, it, it basically just writes like a beautiful poem, like right after that line to mm-hmm. her. It's like unbelievable. It's, it's so, yeah, it's, I don't know. And even like, I listened to the song way before I was in a relationship or anything. So, I, I couldn't even directly relate to that, but I mean, I guess you can like you can go to like a familial type of love or whatever, something like that, if you want. Yeah. But either way, it still hit me like just as hard. So awesome! I that's freaking- that's really surprising that this is your favorite. Like, it's still a little forgettable for me just because yeah. of the energy, and I I may have to listen to it a couple more times. But the lyrics hit home for sure. Like, I yeah. totally agree with you. It's at least like top two. But <laughs> it might be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Top two, not one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and we're on to the best track on the album, brother. <laughs> that we are, you we are doing right. that right now. You might be correct. Fuck me, brother. This is, this also is top two. <laughs> this might, like, I'm gonna come out and say, it, man, this might be one of my favorite songs I've ever heard in my life. I'm not even I, gonna lie. I, I independently had that thought by myself. I was like. <laughs> This Which is funny is because actually like actually insanely fucking good. It's stupid. Like, it's fucking it's literally so stupid it hurts. Like I have such a like the reason why I said I had a complicated relationship with this album was because I heard it before. So it mm-hmm. never struck home to me when I first heard it. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of pissed at myself for waiting four years to listen to this shit again. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could have been like waking up on Tuesdays, like going to <laughs> like college and like having this stuff in my head you know like how i did with damn and shit <laughs> but now i i'm robbed so now i gotta do it from now on you know i'm pissed dude i'm so happy to hear that i yeah i <sighs> this song like, literally every bar on here is is, is a bar like yeah. <laughs> absolutely i i literally and that's that's the thing is like i told you like the first time i heard this i was i was just like okay Okay, the instrumentation. Okay, okay. And I just wasn't even absorbing the lyrics. Like, I was enjoying yeah, the song no, it, a yeah. lot without the lyrics. And then yeah. I figure out what the lyrics are, and I'm like, this is this is one of my... This, this is an insane song. This is a really, really good fucking song. This is, like, top whatever. Like, I... I 
<laughs> Go ahead. Take it. Take it from me. Take it from me. And meanwhile, uh, I'm wearing my can't pay my fucking bills hat, man. Yeah, man. It's yeah. It's, it's, it. It. Okay. So Osair is a very quiet, subtle song, and then it just comes in with a explosive. Oh, yeah, the year the seagulls again. This is build up to it, and then it's just brum, 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 brum. And like okay, this tempo is like yep. freaking nutty, yep. Yep. and then just as I feel soon, like it builds like like yeah. the tempo actually increases. I feel like it's maybe it's just me. It might, no, yeah, it's not but you. It, it's, it's not just you. It definitely does. It mm. does, and then it resets to where it yep. first began, and then it does it again, like between the hooks. It's yep. really mm. cool. It's dope because like, I was I was doing this like I I listened to it on a walk yesterday, <laughs> and I'm I'm bobbing my head to it, and then I'm like. I'm having to go faster. Pause. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. He starts. Yeah. He starts off with the anti-war stuff of you know the, the whole body's... song is anti-war. Like... Yeah, exactly, exactly. The I mean, it's called "Call to Arms," so that's like you know, get which is ironic get, as well. War. Exactly, it's supposed to be like an oxymoron, or not an oxymoron, but I- irony. Yeah, just ironic. Um, yeah. and so he's he talks about the bodies keep piling up. How many more are we gonna send to go die? Um, and they talk about he says they send their sons and daughters off to die for some oil to control the heroin, which gets into like very deep politics of like, of the fact that we were like funding drug cartels to like fight the Taliban and like all this stuff. Like he gets, he gets deep in like two lines and it's yeah. like, like that was insane to me. I was like, Holy fucking shit. Um, and then the, I think uh, it's really hard to call it my favorite bar. Cause there's so many good ones, but it's like, well, son, I hope you don't grow up believing that you got to be a puppet to be a man. And it's like, oh, oh man, man, dude, like that, that that's the absolute opposite sentiment of like a lot of people of like manly men join the military and go and fight and die for the cause. And he's like, I hope you I hope, son, that you don't feel that way ever. I hope you never get swayed by that. Like you have to be a manly man and join the military and all this stuff, because I hope you don't get squished under Uncle Sam's shoe, basically, is like uh, like that. Yeah, and, and then I think after that is the first round of horns, <laughs> and it's he just goes in and out over and over. Bam, again. Bam, 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 bam. Dude, I, I've, I've had that stuck in my head for like three hours now. Oh, I want it! I want it's I out of my whole, head. I need it back. <laughs> bam, bam, the whole thing with the title is like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's called to arms. Call to arms. You no, know, I think I think he's. I mean, the message. Is anti-war. Maybe he's calling people to arms for a different mm. mentality. Mm. He's yeah. giving me a sense. Like that's what you that's the new cry. I think he's, a dark, he's a dark connector. Yeah, I, I can subscribe to that interpretation me for too, sure. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's, yeah, ring, uh, you could also subscribe to him. I'll ring the bell for that one. Yeah, <laughs> ring the bell as well. Yes. I will ring that. Ring the bell as well. <laughs> and uh honorable Sturgill Simpson forever. Yeah. <laughs> okay thank you mm-hmm. yeah the uh yeah don't believe you, you... <laughs> yeah. don't grow up believing you got to be a puppet to be a man it's probably my favorite lyric on the whole album that's that not is... that's definitely not a hot take at all it's like a freaking 18 wheeler freaking <laughs> yep brother. That, it's it like a be... track five <laughs> <laughs> you're goddamn <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> wait what is happening <laughs> is that track five <laughs> wait i think it is race for impact no, 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 because that track works too. It's six. I guess, ah! I guess Brace uh, for Impact is track six. Yeah, it's the fifth song because they have the intro to skip. But true, true, true. Shout out to everyone who knows what we're talking about. Yeah, not not what I'm talking about. I'm still lost. I was I thought you were yeah. a Brace for Impact reference, but uh. <laughs> but no, but well, that's a good reference too. But yeah, and, and he just keeps Brain going. Praying mantis. <laughs> Sorry. Praying mantis. Yep. <laughs> Put, cut your hair off, put a badge on your arm, strip your over identity. identity. Tell you to keep your mouth shut, boy, and get in line. Meet your maker overseas. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think, can't I think, be- I think my mm-hmm. favorite sequence of the whole album is the uh, they serve up distractions and we eat them with fries. And then he just screams until the bombs fall out of the fucking skies and then the horns come mm-hmm. in harder than they have before somehow. Yeah. And you're just, like, you're just like, you're and you're fucking, the band is going nutty, nutty. As you would say, yeah. dummy, dummy, stupid, are you dumb? Like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. It is impossible for me to not get hyped at that moment. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They eat screams that he belts that out like a mother oh, freaker. Yeah. yeah. The horns just drop like crazy. And then y'all, y'all heard my quote this, yep. this week, man, or this episode, bro. I ain't even got to repeat it, but 
That yeah. bullshit's got to go, man. <laughs> it's got to go. Bullshit's got to go. You are so true. I mean, that is hey, the, the best way to fucking end the album. Because it, it's funny because, like, he, like, he, he nods off the song at, like, the fourth minute. And you kind of think that it's just going to, like, you know, fizzle out. And then he's just like, nah, bitch, you thought? Like, I'm coming back with a vengeance. Like, yeah. this is Empire Strikes Back. Like, <laughs> yeah, they got freaking horn solos, guitar solo, freaking, what is it, the keyboard solo the on Piano, here? yep. Piano yeah. is going nuts the entire time, regardless of whether it has a, a, a solo. Like, oh, yeah, man. freaking crazy. It's in the no, what a baller way to end the album. Oh, it's, yeah. It's such a good cap off. Yeah, my God. Hard as freak. Yeah, like I said, this is one of the best songs I think I've ever heard in my life. Ah, that's amazing to it, hear. Like perfectly, it perfectly encapsulates everything I love about music, like in a five-minute package. Yeah, <laughs> and it's 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 the extreme of that they recorded it live, where you can you can almost tell listening to it that all these instruments are in the same room and they build and they build and they build to the point where it is almost just noise. Like it is almost like the band fighting each other. And then it just <laughs> and then it resets and it's all organized again. And you're like, fuck yes. It's, a, it's, so it's fucking country cool. shonen. Country <laughs> shonen. That's a fact. I'm naming this podcast country shonen. <laughs> Jeez. That's I mean, perfect. it is a letter to his son, so it does kind of work. There you and, go. It, and it's about his his coming of age in the navy, so it it kind of <laughs> works on multiple levels. Honestly, now that yeah. we're into it. There you go. That's, bars on bars on bars. Yeah, it's got to be up there. I mean, it's definitely it's hard to say it's not my favorite on here. I don't even. It's it's, it's just, hard. No, it's hard. It's, it's really I've hard. it's a tough tough competition, but it has to be freaking like top two. And I, I do love it so much. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's unreal. God dang, what a way to send off the album! It's top nine, and it's not nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, or two. <laughs> okay, okay, I can deal with that. Uh, are we gonna give scores? This, this, uh, to the Mister Honorable. Let's give scores to our first country album, the Mister Honorable Sturgill Simpson, out of Kentucky. Alex, give us your score, baby. I can't give it a score. I can't do it. I don't know. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, okay. No no ballpark? You, what you feeling at least? You don't gotta give a solid one. Just give like No I can't do it. I don't know why? I, I I feel like I have to absorb it for like I have to absorb it for a while. Yeah, take listen to this podcast again, take notes, and then listen to it again. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> see, how, see, how, see how it hits you, yeah. I can respect that. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you listened at least and you could yeah here for what it is maybe it'll grow on you more maybe not we'll see we'll see yeah Either way yeah okay Can't uh, your score, baby mm-hmm. i will give it uh eight newly minted uh sturgill F- simpsons fans out of ten <laughs> let's go boy i will yeah. not, i was gonna i was gonna say newly minted country fan but that's too big of an um, of an umbrella for me to uh to say that yet um, we'll get you. But I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to those, uh, you know, Johnny Cash, like you said, that other sort of, um, you know, soulful, uh, meaningful country. Um, definitely yeah, send those my way, and maybe we'll see them on the podcast at some point. So, and yeah. if you feel like it, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll recommend to you doubly my uh, track of the week for this one, uh, for sure. If you like this, okay. uh, so yeah. check that out, and then maybe have another one earlier in this week, back in so time. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Nice, dude. Hype. So, which is I I expected I I walked in thinking I was gonna give this a six at most. Like honestly, like even <laughs> even with even with like the everything like, but when I mm. listened to the instrumentation and I I got on the lyrics and everything and I realized how deep and how much of a poet he was, I was like, I can't like eight is the floor for me. Honestly, I love to hear it. It, it, it could go up. It could go up. Honestly, love to hear it, man. I'm happy. I'm doing it. I'm fucking doing it. This is the ten. I'm fucking <laughs> doing, it. No, I'm doing it. I'm sorry. I, I was. I was. I'm oh sorry. I can't. God. I can't. This is God like. God damn. Even though, even though there are like wow. indeed slow parts for me, oh there are indeed slow parts for me. But dude, I like that. That that last listen I had listening or like looking at the lyrics is like it was like otherworldly. Like it, it's it just yeah. brought a whole new level of inspiration, like appreciation for this and. Wow. The instrumentation alone is worth a ten. <laughs> so Damn. I can get over I can get over not digging like Breakers Roar all the way, but like nah, this this is this is this is the country album. 
This is the Dang. Mm-hmm. I'm giving this shit <laughs> wow. a fat 10, yeah. I, give it a 10. Wow. My mind is blown. I could not be happier right now. That is... I, I'm happy as shit that I fuck. I finally went back to this because it's been like just looking at me every time I scroll through my S's on my phone. <laughs> like I'm just like I see Sturgill. No, he, I see him. I'm scrolling though. I'm gonna go listen to some Vale of Maya, but I'll get back to you eventually. <laughs> Maya, shout out. Yeah, yeah. I I appreciate that, and it's freaking great to hear. You know, obviously, you know, it doesn't mean that everyone is gonna love this particular album, but y'all gave it a chance. And you know, for for most of us, it was you know smashed it out of the park in terms of liking it. Either way, that's freaking great. Uh, <laughs> I feel weird because my score is a little lower, and I'm like the guy who's you know been advocating for this album for years and years. But I, I guess I'm maybe just a little bit more you know, uh, what's the word? Freaking. You're more my, reserved with your with your yeah, ratings, yeah, my, which is to- it, totally fine. I wish I was like you, honestly. <laughs> like it's it's much more respectable when you just when you save those tens and you know. Yeah. You know, either way, freaking, you know, I, I I can see I can see that either way, but uh, for me it's a nine out of ten, which is oh only... wow, okay, I, yeah. I'm sitting here thinking you're gonna give it like a seven and a half or something. Oh, like, oh god, Jesus I would Christ, I would, I would cringe at myself for that. No. Nuts, yeah, yeah, no, I uh, and you know, probably only like fifteen albums for me have ever gotten like a nine or above in my from what I listen to, I would say. So I just you know, uh rare score for me but forget all that just freaking love this album um yeah it, it god it makes me feel so good just it's like comforting it's freaking touching you can learn stuff from it freaking it's like he's your other freaking dad teaching you for some sure lesson. oh for sure like, yeah you speak factoids. yeah you can get freaking hyped and go crazy on it instrumentation oh uh, yeah nutty uh, yeah just before, it, it, before we yeah. forget um shout out to god damn it what was their name dap kings is that what they're called hmm. the um that they provide the horns oh shout out so, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. they were like a, a group from the 90s so oh yeah shout out to them yeah yeah awesome. every they, they killed the, shit. the dap kings yeah they killed this yeah. shit that's awesome so Right. There you go, guys. Our first country review, my favorite country album, I guess so far. You know, for a few of us, that might be true. <laughs> so uh, it is my favorite country album. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. definitely my favorite. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I can't name yeah. another country album. So there you go. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, and we are going to get into a freaking new, uh, exciting territory for us all. I guess I'll just uh, throw it out there since I'm already talking, you know, yapping my head off. Um, we're going to start yeah. a bit of a, a bit of a mini series in in uh, music box for us. I'm going to explore the legendary thrash metal group Metallica. Yes, so, sir. In order to do this, we want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, hopefully it'll be you know a bit of an undertaking for us, you know. And hopefully we all enjoy Metallica and we're not just stuck with them because we're going to be doing them for like the next. Well, we'll see if like stuff messes up the schedule in terms of oh. new stuff coming out. But, <laughs> but basically, as it is planned right now, the next three music boxes are going to be Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and then the Black Album, which we sort of, um, you know, a couple of us just sort of threw out there. Like, this is probably the, the, the three to go with in terms of significant stuff to talk about. You know, maybe some different sounds for them. Obviously, yeah, Steven and I definitely agree with that. Yeah, they have you know, probably even a couple other classics, but, you know, they're just that yeah. crazy. So, uh, they're like, yeah. you know, the Kanye of freaking metal, so, it's, uh... <laughs> that's, good, that's good, yeah. Them and Avenge. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, freaking, yeah, so we'll, uh, it'll be, I mean, if you count Avenge, you can, a lot of people would say Hard Rock for Avenge, but it's kind of the same amount of heaviness, I mean, for a lot of their stuff, so, but... The Thrash Metal Kings, they're part of the big four. Them, uh, yeah. Slayer, Megadeth, yeah. and Anthrax. Right, yeah. The big four, the big four uh, Thrash Metal groups. Yeah. So, you know, obviously people are familiar, so it'll be a, a bit of a journey for us. Um, I, I guess uh, worth noting, Trevor, have you listened to any of their albums in full? No, not albums in full. I absolutely know. You, of course, you know, like, you know, Unforgiven, Sabbath True, uh, yeah, Master yeah. Puppets, you know, all yeah, the all course. the radio shit you heard for sure. Right, you, yeah. have, you would too. Uh, this is what I'm saying. Like, um, <laughs> might, you know, I mean, Enter Sandman, like, that's like one of the biggest rock songs, like, of all time. 
He didn't know him. Blue. It's Paul. See, that's that's what you're getting. At. That's but what Inter- I. Sandman is like on another stratosphere. You might be right. That well, so, I, I'm excited to get to that song. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I've I've been wanting to listen to Ride the Lightning just because of the fucking album art. That shit is crazy. Yeah, and the, the, the damn like the damn name Ride the Lightning. That's so <laughs> so sick. Like, it's very it's metal. Yeah, album art. Yeah, yeah. So, Seriously uh, though, album art's pulled me in. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. For facts, facts. It's we, like uh, it's like when you're uh it's like when you're a kid going into game stuff and you get a game because you like the cover. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah, and you just hope it pays off, and you know I hope it will with this because I've listened to Master of Puppets and Black Album, but that's it for me. These guys haven't heard any of the album. It'd be a whole journey of freaking. Hopefully, you know, getting into metal, bit of bit of history mixed in there, you know, context mixed in. I'm excited. Hope you'll join us. Any metal heads yeah. out there, maybe you can, you know you know see our reaction and just go like dang this is like and this is what happened in 1987 we were you know we were on this stuff and it was crazy right. when this came out. that'd be cool that'd be, too, so. that'd be so cool that'd be so cool yeah there. yeah yeah so we're gonna structure it i don't know if you said it we're gonna structure it just like anime box what we've been doing with my hero well mm-hmm. the second part of my hero has not come out yet but it will mm-hmm. be coming to your head tops next week so it'll be similar in that in that kind of space where we just Mm-hmm. deep diving out an artist and maybe we'll who knows how it how it'll go we're just kind of experimenting at this point so yeah we'll see how it goes yeah so and with that i think we're cool right yeah, yeah. looking forward to the future it's been uh real the uh honorable unboxing life podcast signing off i guess oh, we can't take that title off we, we can't, we can't. By the state of- we're frauds <laughs> Yeah, yeah we out. haven't been we haven't been freaking sworn in by the KF console. KF. <laughs> KS- <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that is a fact. <sighs> yeah. It's weird because it says it says KFC, but then it says console. It's not KFC console. It's KF. So yeah, it's KF, KF console. console. Yeah. KF console. The I guess you ride console. Yeah. You can't oh, okay. say you can't say KFC console. But you you need some you need a space to put your your bucket of chicken in your in your console. So I, it, I it does deserve a place on the market. Yeah, way, the existence, a, the existence I have a spot in my corner that's missing a, 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 uh, a spot in my corner that's missing exactly that. So <laughs> that's true. I my, yeah, my, my very... PS5 desperately needs some chicken grease. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> the the feng shui only totally. has one thing missing, and it's it's Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, you can you can make your own at home just. Stick a chicken wing in your uh, disc drive, your PS5. Oh Don't do God. that, please. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't. We're not liable for anything that you guys do outside this podcast. Yeah, we advise against Dude, that. if we got <laughs> no, 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 if we got brought to court for for someone trying to sue us because they broke a console with a chicken wing, that would be the best publicity for it's, us ever. No, it's like so, it's like those memes where it's like like instructions unclear. Got my dick stuck in a in a disc tray. It's like ceiling fan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, instructions are clear. Got my got my, got my got my chicken stuck in an HDMI cable like port. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, dude. Shout All out. Right. Well, that's All right, people. That's some classic fuckery before we properly sign off. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this country fried episode. Signing out. Been real. Hell yeah. yeah true. Hell yeah, yeah. brother. Hell yeah, brother. Now, I'm sending out lots of love. I'm sending out love to my people listening on on apple podcast if you listen on itunes shout out to you you know what i'm saying give us which a we haven't which we forgot to say in the beginning of the episode when i wanted to <laughs> say which we'll do that we'll do I that would, in the previous episode, we'll do guess. we'll do that in the the we'll do it in the previous <laughs> earlier episode, episode yeah we'll go back in time we'll, and edit that so my yeah. time machine yeah but if you are listening like this far and you have not given us a rating on Apple Podcasts, whatever rating you would like to give us just please give us a rating that would be mm-hmm. much obliged very it's helpful, very helpful. Yep. Yeah, and if you're great. watching on YouTube, subscribe. You know, we're you trying know, to yeah. hit a, hit a like or a dislike, whatever you want. Leave a comment, mm-hmm. anything, any engagement mm-hmm. helps us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yep. With that, I say thank you. I love you all. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Rate absolutely. Rate whatever you want, but uh, know that only the five stars have a chance of getting read out on the episode. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, do that. I know. Uh, I know. Sturgill was telling us he had some some stuff about putting down your phone in the uh, in in the call to arms. But uh, alternatively, if you want to find us on socials, uh, we're uh, we're at Unboxing Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, r slash Unboxing Life Podcast, and then you can find us if you want to through those. Um, Don't follow me. Don't whatever. follow Trevor. Follow the main account. Yeah, yeah. Do that. Anyway. 
thank you for listening. I will say adios, partner. <laughs> I'll tip my hat to you, partner. Yeah. Uh, no, this, this was dope. And I, I didn't even think I was going to give it a 10 until I fucking did, which was <laughs> awesome. Like, I, lo- I love little moments like that when I like, yeah. I and like, it's what he says. Like, if there's any doubt, then there's no doubt. Go with your gut. So this is mm. fucking bars, man. He, he just, he spelt it out for me. So I had to. <laughs> But this was a dope fucking album, and I'm glad that we we touched upon it. And I'm excited for some Metallica. Mm. Get our our yeah. metal horns out, you know. Do a oh, little devil dang. action. Craziness, a little bit of. <laughs> I'm holding okay. myself up, waiting for you to end the episode. So. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, but yeah, to the yeah. Mr. Honorable Sturgill Simpson, thank you for this masterpiece. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> and the Unboxing Light Podcast. Peace out, baby forever. <laughs>